that, uh, we go to our guest line to bring on, as promised, the head coach of the Colgate Raiders here on a game day. Colgate and Syracuse in the Dome tonight, 7 o'clock tip. Matt Langle, our guest on the show. Coach, thanks so much for finding a few minutes for us on a game day. How are you today? All right, two games in. Uh, you, you beat SUNY Canton, uh, you beat, beat up, them up pretty good, and, and then you fall on the road uh, to Drexel. Um, what have you learned about your team uh, to this point through two games? Uh, that I got a lot more to learn about my team, probably. <laughs> um, uh, I, I think, you know, we're, we're certainly, like most teams at this time of the year who are, you know, have different rosters and, and new faces, you're, um, you're still searching for an identity. It's, an, it's a new, new process for us. We've had such a consistent group for the last number of years. And while we have some familiar faces, they're, I'm asking them to play different roles than they've played in the last couple of years. And um, so I, I think what, what I've learned is that, you know, we can be a tale of two teams and, uh, you know, just need to keep working at it every single day and, and try and put our best foot forward. You know, you brought up the consistency, and I wanted to ask you about that. I mean, how have you been able to maintain this level of consistency, even in these changing times, right, with the portal and NIL and, uh, you know, a lot of guys leaving and trying to go to bigger programs and so on and so forth? How have you been able to to maintain that level of, of winning that you've been, you know, able to do year in and year out? I think if I had a, a, an exact recipe or formula, I could bottle it up and sell it and, and retire. So <laughs> I, I don't think there's there's a, a firm answer. I, I think we've we've had a great group of guys uh, who come from extraordinary families who uh, chose to come here to Colgate to play for this re- to play for this program for a lot of different reasons. And so, you know, when when other options came came available, or you know, really the fifth year guys coming back uh, to do their COVID year, uh, continue their education, to continue to be a part of this program has has been a big jolt. And so, you know, their choices to do that instead of go pursue, you know, other opportunities for other reasons um, w- was critical. Um, you know, the, the guys have just, you know, really valued the experience and their teammates and playing the brand of basketball that we do, that it's, you know, not about one individual, um, that it's really a team brand. Uh, and so, you know, I feel fortunate to be the coach of, of a group of guys who's who's been able to do that uh, over the last handful of years. In terms of the personnel, you said a few familiar faces back, and one of those familiar faces is Jeff Woodward, who's, you know, a senior now, and you've seen him kind of grow up and develop uh, throughout the last several years within the program. Uh, what what can you tell us about his game, how it's grown, how it's evolved, and, and how important he is to this year's team, not just you know with his skill set, but also with his leadership this year? In a lot of ways, because of his position, um, just you know, big guys, especially at our level, they often take time to develop and grow. He's probably our biggest recruit. Uh, last season, you know, his fourth year, he wants to be a clinical psychologist. It's, you know, his his basketball days are numbered, and he's okay with that. He's not going to pursue professional opportunities. So, you know, have him back in his experience. You know, he's only won championships in his fourth years at Colgate, and so to to be the the anchor of our defense and the focal point of our offense um, is is really important. You know, but even him plays a different role this season because you know his whole career he's been alongside other guys. And, you know, you know, Keegan Records was there for all four of you now. And now he's the only really experienced big guy, Jeff. And he's always had some experienced guards um, to, to play with. And, and now he doesn't. And so, um, yeah, his leadership on the court, off the court, um, in terms of, you know, tactics of what we're doing, but also in terms of that, you know, culture buzzword that everybody talks about he's he's uh, really working hard um at the leadership aspect of of continuing to, to pass on what's been so important to us all right you mentioned some of the newcomers as well can you give uh, su fans an idea who are going to you know see this team in the dome maybe tonight for the first time this season who are some of the the newcomers they should be looking out for I think it's less about newcomers and more about new roles, right? So, you know, Nick Louis-Jacques started for us until he got injured last season. He's in his fourth season, but now he's being asked to play a, a prominent role. Same for Brady Cummins, who's in his third season. He he started when Nick went down, and they were both huge parts of our championship season. But, you know, now they're being relied on to be main guys, to be, you know, consistent scorers and playmakers and, you know, defensive, you know, presence, um, even though they're upperclassmen, it's a new role for them. Uh, and then two sophomores, um, 
uh, Jalen Cox uh, started for us in the back end of the season, was critical in our championship run in the Patriot League, played a few minutes uh, in the Cuse game last year. Uh, I'm sure learned some valuable lessons uh, in that game, but he's really, you know, with, with Braden Smith leaving us for Gonzaga, uh, Jalen's the only true you know, playmaking guard that has any any experience in a Colgate uniform. And then, interestingly enough, his high school teammate, who uh, who went to a different year of prep school in New England, but but his high school teammate Parker Jones, uh, a really good player, but you know, in his in his first year, you know, starting and 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 having big responsibilities for our team. So, you know, I think those four guys. We also returned Chandler Baker, who's come off the bench for us and and is a dangerous weapon for us and experience. Um, that that those those guys are going to be, you know, asked to do a lot. Yes, we have Blake Forrest, a, a small point guard from the state of Washington, who will come off the bench, and and Sam Wright, who's in his second year, who didn't play very much last year with our veteran front court, who will come off the bench uh, and 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 get some minutes. But it's really those guys who have played a little bit who are being asked to kind of step into to bigger roles. That uh, if our team's going to continue to have the successes that we have in the past, or we're going to we're going to need those guys. And you certainly had success against this particular opponent uh, the last three years, uh, winning two of them and, and very nearly beating them for a third time in a row last year. What what has allowed you to have success against Syracuse the last three years? Uh, yeah, again, I know exactly what it was. I would. Uh, We'd throw that same game plan out there. I think you know this would be my I don't know 12th or 13th time coaching uh, against the Orange in the Dome, and um, it's always a really challenging game. Their size, length, athletic ability. Um, you know, you've got to take care of the basketball. You can't turn it over like we did last year. Once we got up 24 points in the second half, um, you've got to really battle on the glass because they're. They're bigger, longer, uh, more athletic, especially than our team this year. So you've got to scrap and fight uh, tooth and nail to not let them get easy points. Um, and then, again, there's no secret. You've got to make shots. Um, again, you, I think we can run good offense. You know, for a long time it was against the zone. But, you know, more recently against Coach Autry's, you know, man-to-man defense, you, you've got to – you got to uh, work hard to get shots, but then you got to make them. Um, you know, we weren't able to do that on the road against Drexel, and you know, on the road against anybody, if you're if you can't make some shots to to keep yourself in the game, especially against a, a team as dynamic as Syracuse, then then it could be a long evening. Uh, what stands out to you from a personnel standpoint about this particular Syracuse squad this year? I, I think their talent, their overall talent, you know, stands out. They've got some guys. You know, uh, be it Carlos from, you know, the, the CAA conference is really good. And he played for, you know, a, a guy, Speedy Claxton, who I, I grew up playing against a little bit and has, you know, has had a lot of really good players. So, you know, he has that acumen. He's been coached for a number of years. Um, and then, you know, the, the other end of the spectrum is a guy like Lampkin, Lampkin who's played at a really high level. Um, for a few different schools, who's in and is a talent, um, you know, Jared Davis. We, we played against him a couple of years ago. He had a huge game against us when he was at Delaware. And then, you know, the Syracuse guys. You know, JJ is really talented, and Chris Bell can go off. And then you add in some of their younger players who are really highly touted. I think they've got a lot of weapons as um, you know as they start to figure out who they're going to be over the course of of you know what's a, a long college basketball season. And then, uh, you know, lastly, and I, I know you touched on it here a, a little bit, um, but what does this this game come down to tonight? You've talked about what you guys have done well in the past. Uh, how do you see this thing playing it, itself out tonight at 7 o'clock? Yeah, I, I mean, again, you don't know. Every game has its own identity, and, and they can go a variety of different ways. I think for us, our focus is, you know, just divide the game up, as simple as it sounds, into – a four minute round, you know, for every four minutes, there's an immediate timeout. And, um, you know, you've got to avoid being knocked out in those four minute rounds. So you've got to do everything you can on both ends of the floor to, to not beat yourselves and to kind of stay in the fight. And the, the further you can get again, Lemoyne, I thought did a great job in that game. It, you know, some things had to break their way and could break against, you know, Syracuse in terms of shot making and what have you. But, uh, I think what you hope for as the coach is this that you can survive a number of those rounds, and as the the game winds down, you can you can kind of be in position to, to steal one in the dome, which is you know really hard to do. Yeah, we're uh, we're certainly looking forward to this game tonight. I always enjoy chatting with you, coach. Thanks so much for giving us a few minutes on a game day. Best of luck tonight. Best of luck throughout the season.
All right, you guys got it. Thanks for having me. All right, Matt Langle, head coach of Colgate. And-